this is Scott Morris, and this is a, another video in my Classical Guitar Complete series uh, based on my book, Classical Guitar Complete, From Basses to Bach, uh, Volume 1. And uh, today, I'm going to be talking about barring. And uh, the little piece that I just played, uh, that's a uh, variation from the uh, Fernando Sor Opus 28 Marble Variations. And I, I wanted to play it because it's got a lot of little, you know, half bars and you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, kind of untraditional, uh, you know, bars. Not really untraditional, I guess that's the wrong word. But a lot of people just sort of think, like, throw the whole finger down like a capo all the time. But you have to actually be much more strategic than that when you're, uh, when you're playing uh, music, if you want to have a, an efficient left hand. So I thought what I'd do is just, uh, you know, first go through and, you know, you know, talk a little bit about um, some basic barring technique, then, you know, talk about some specific examples in the uh, little piece that I just played, and then give you some examples from uh, a couple of other pieces and some exercises that uh, will hopefully help uh, make those bar chords a little bit easier. One of the first things that uh, you need to understand with the classical guitar is barring is actually one of the uh, most stressful things you could do. Stressful meaning requiring the, the, the most energy um, you can do with your left hand um, because of the size of the neck and you know the bigger strings you know it's, it's just a lot harder than you know if you're on an electric guitar or even an acoustic uh, steel string something like that. Classical it's, it's harder it's a bigger neck so you know we've really got to respect the, uh, the bar um, and don't just throw them down you know, whenever we want. As a matter of fact, one of the first things I do when I'm looking at a piece of music, when I'm you know, learning something, when I put a bar down, I, I actually ask myself if it's actually even necessary. Is there some way to do it um, where I don't actually need to bar? Um, if you determine that you do actually have to bar, um, then the question is, well, you know, how little bar can I get away with? So you know, I guess what I mean is, um, if you only need to bar, the top two strings, don't throw down all six or five or four, just, just put down the top two and um, you know, always do as little, little as possible there. Um, you know, a couple of other things I'll get into a little bit later, you don't always have to hold down all of the strings with your finger when you're barring. You can be a little bit more strategic and I'll give you an exercise for that um, in a moment as well. But you know, let's just talk about basic you know, barring technique. There's an exercise in my book that I stole from uh, one of my old teachers, Benjamin Rotary, and I call it Ben's Bar Exercise. And uh, it goes like this. So if, if you go up to the fifth fret on the guitar and just try to hold down the top two strings. So you know I chose the, the fifth fret here rather than here um, because the tension is greater um, the closer you get to the nut here. So the tension is always greatest on the string, you know, here and all the way over here. Um, the further you get, or the closer you get to the middle of the string, the more slack you're going to have. So, you know, to do it here, or even, you know, fifth, uh, seventh position would be fine, but, you know, fifth position will do. So, try to get a clear sound with that bar, and if you're getting, you know, that, you know, chances are you're just not using the finger in exactly the right way. What I like to do is I roll the finger a little bit out like this, so if you feel the side of your finger here, it's a much flatter, hard surface than right here. This is more like, you know, hills and, and valleys. Um, also, if you're barring straight on, a lot of people think you have to bar straight on. Um, that actually puts your fingers in an awkward position, so they're not as, you know, flexible as they could be. So, you know, I bar on the side of the finger, and also it's very helpful sometimes to kind of turn it out a little bit like that. If you do this, again, it throws your whole, you know, left-hand position out of, uh, out of whack there. So, get those top two strings. And then just simply move down. Try to get three, like that. Then four, five, and six. And you know, it's a good idea actually to roll it like that. So then if you hear something like, and like, ah, oh, you can make a little adjustment there. So, you know, if you can do that, then what you might want to do is start moving this down. And then obviously the hardest bar on the guitar would be the, uh, first fret full bar there. 
So there's just a little exercise that uh, you can play around with. And I, I go into much more detail in the book about, you know, the finger angle and, you know, how you can use the weight of the arm and, you know, all these different things to, to make it a little bit uh, easier. It uh, make this an hour long video, so I'm not going to do that to you. Um, okay, so let's uh, just talk about a couple of the spots in the little piece here. So there's the first bar. And as you can see, you know, I only need to bar the top two strings. Just that. So you wouldn't want to put down, you know, the whole bar there. That would be an inefficient way to bar. Um, another spot here. top two strings, I relax the finger and move it up, relax the finger, move it back, and that relaxation actually happens really fast, so I'm not doing that. Okay, um, and then later on in the piece, um, there's actually a spot where we have to do a little bit more of a, uh, well, you know, a little bit more of a bar. Here and it's an unusual sort of uh, sort of bar. Uh, let me uh, just sort of get the spot. Okay, so right there. What I need to do is I only need to hold down a couple of the strings, a couple of bass strings, and it's a bar there. So what I'm going to do is I'm only going to hold down the strings that I need. Um, actually, I'm not putting down the rest of the finger there. So if I were to, you know. Actually, that seems like a bad bar, but what I'm doing is I'm strategically barring only the strings that I need. So it's kind of a strange looking thing there. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but I'm just applying pressure with sort of like a flat fingertip and then a little bit of bend there, and then I'm not even coming into contact with the rest of the, uh, the strings. So don't put down the whole bar if you only need to get a little portion of it there. A um, couple other little things I might uh, mention. The, you know, what I call an exterior bar, um, I don't know if maybe I'm the only one who uses that term, you know, exterior bars and interior bars. Um, take something like this here, right? So there, it looks like a full bar, doesn't it, at uh, the second fret. But actually, I'm only needing to play the second fret of the fifth string and the second fret of the first string. I don't need to play any of those notes. So I don't actually put down a flat finger. I just use my fingertip here to get the B on the fifth string. And I use that part of the finger right there to get the F sharp on the first string. And then the whole middle part of the finger, that's actually relaxed. So if I were to you know, roll this bar as I have it now, it would sound like this. See? So, you know, often, you know, I'm talking about these principles to, uh, to a student and, uh, you know, I'll mention something like, you know, something like this pattern, passage here. So that little bar that I just talked about, where instead of holding down all five strings there, um, you're really only holding down the fifth and the first, and that's all relaxed in there. And I'll often hear things like, well, you know, it's not that much more effort put all five down and you know that may be true but you know if if you're playing you know complicated music you know you 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 know could potentially uh, potentially be barring or over barring um, a whole lot so it could be sort of death by a thousand paper cuts so I, I think guitar is hard enough as it is to do anything that might make it even slightly harder um, I think is uh, fairly uh, foolhardy and should be avoided at all costs so, again, just to kind of recap some of the uh, little ideas here in the video. One, um, you know, barring, just, you know, think about rolling out a little bit to the side of the finger there. If, if you're new to barring, you know, little exercises where you just practice the bar all by itself. Really good idea. When you're going through your pieces, uh, be very strategic about your barring. You know, always ask yourself, um, one, is a bar absolutely necessary? You know, the, the you know, amount of times I've seen somebody barring something that actually didn't require a bar at all. Um, you know, I wish I had a dollar for every one of those. 
Um, so make sure you first you actually have to bar, and uh, if you do, then start thinking, well, how much do I have to bar? Do I really have to put down, you know, all of the strings, or is it, you know, just a couple? Maybe it's just, you know, on the outside. Maybe it's just on the inside, like that uh, last bar I showed you from the little uh, soar variation there. So anyway, these are just some of the things to, uh, to think about, and I uh, hope you got something out of this and look forward to uh, seeing you in a future video. Bye.